introduction to infrastructure as code with terraform so our agenda for today is basic introduction to infrastructure as code some of its benefits approaches we will also look at terraform its fundamentals and some of its commands after that we will also do some hands on stuff like creating some resources on aws so infrastructure as code can be defined as managing and provisioning an infrastructure through code instead of using manual processes like provisioning it through aws or gcp console there are mainly two approaches imperative with this approach we define a desired configuration as a sequence of commands executed in certain order using a bash script using aws cli to provision our resources another way is declarative and this is becoming much more common a declarative approach defines the system's desired state including what resource you need and any properties they should have for example aws cloud formation ansible terraform which we'll be looking at shortly let's look at some benefits of iac first one is consistency the goal of iac is to eliminate manual processes which help us iterate faster while maintaining consistency as our infrastructure evolves second one is simplicity iac allows us to spin up entire infrastructure by running just few scripts we can pretty much provision anything we want not just for our production but for our staging environments as well this makes our sdlc much simpler third one is increased efficiency as provisioning becomes more reliable and automated our engineers spend less time performing manual work and more time executing their task the fourth one is the most important one for me risk minimization imagine having a devops engineer who's the only one knows our setup this is really common in startups where a single engineer has to wear multiple hats to do multiple tasks now imagine that engineer is leaving here iac is a perfect fit as a new engineer who is onboarded they will need to spend much time understanding how our infrastructure is provisioned finally let's look at terraform Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that allows us to build, change, version infrastructure safely and efficiently. Terraform uses the HashiCorp language or HCL as its language to define a resource regardless of provider being used. So here's the image from Terraform Docs that sums it up perfectly. We are the practitioner. We write some infrastructure as code. We plan. We apply. And we can apply these changes to tons of resources from different providers such as aws azure gcp and many more let's look at some fundamentals and building blocks of a basic terraform project so first one is state so terraform must store some state about our infrastructure and configuration this state is used by terraform to map our resources to a configuration and keep track of metadata terraform also provides tons of options for how we want to store our state as well for example, we can store our state locally, or we can store it in S3, digital ocean spaces, etc. Next one is provider. So providers are basically plugins that Terraform uses to interact with cloud providers like AWS, GCP, or Azure. Terraform has tons of providers for pretty much anything and can be found at Terraform registry. So as an example, you can see AWS and Google Cloud Provider. Next one is resources. Now this is what we will work with most of the time. Resources are basically blocks that defines any infrastructure object such as compute, network, or any higher level components. So in the example, we can see I'm defining a AWS app runner service. Next is data sources. While resources can be used to manage a new component, data sources gives us a read-only view into existing resources. For example, let's say we have an EBS volume that we did not create by using Terraform but we can still read its config and track it in Terraform. Next is modules. Terraform modules are basically container for resources that can be used together. As an example, let's imagine we want to provision an EKS cluster, but as we know, it's not as simple as defining an EKS resource. We will also need a VPC, subnets, and the list goes on. So modules become a nice way to organize our infrastructure. For example, we can just define our EKS specific resources in EKS module. But wait, there's more. There are tons of modules and resources present on Terraform registry, so we can probably find a module that fits our need, such as ready to use EKS module. Next one is functions. So Terraform also comes with tons of functions, from string functions like join, format, to file system functions. Next up is variables. So variables can serve as input to our resources, data sources, modules, functions, and help us organize common config in a better way. Here, as an example, you can see a variable. I define its type string and given it some default value. 
You can also define some locals, which are basically just temporary variables. Finally, output. Output in Terraform helps us define output we expect when a Terraform scripts run. In the example, we can see I've defined a service endpoint output, which basically outputs the value of app runner domain name. Now let's look at some important Terraform commands we'll be using. I've listed the four most important commands that we will be using most of the time. So the first one is init, which basically prepares and initializes our project. Second one is plan, which shows us the changes that needs to be done when we change our config. And then we use apply command, which basically applies our changes. Finally, the destroy command. So the destroy command destroys all the resources in our config. And we are finally at the hands-on section. Before we start playing around with Terraform, let's make sure we have the following. AWS Secrets and Terraform CLI. I have a video on how to set up AWS Secrets. You can check that out. And as for Terraform CLI, we can set it up by checking out the Terraform docs. I won't be installing the CLI as I've already installed it. So moving on, let's start by creating our basic Terraform project. Let's add a main file. In this file, let's define our provider. So we will be using AWS provider to create some resources like AWS S3 bucket. I'll go to region. Let's define a variable for our bucket name. Type would be string. Let's give it a default value. Now let's define our S3 bucket resource. So resource. Let's say storage bucket. And now let's configure our resource. Let's give our bucket a name. So var dot bucket name, like we defined earlier. ACL, let's say private. Let's also add some output. Let's say value. Storage bucket. And then we want ARN. Now let's initialize and plan our changes. As this is the first time, we'll also have to initialize a project. So I would do Terraform init. So our project has been initialized. And on the left, we can see Terraform plugins and state. So the next step would be planning our changes. So I would do Terraform plan. And as you can see, Terraform plans to add a resource. Okay, so this looks great. Let's apply. Let's say yes. As you can see, the request failed with bucket already exists. This is great as Terraform won't let us apply any random changes. So I'll go to the bucket name and make it unique. Put it 321. Now let's apply again.
perfect id source has been added i will log on to my aws console to verify the same but first let's format our file so terraform fmt and they should format our file as per terraform conventions so now i'll go to the aws console s3 and as you can see our sample bucket was created now that a bucket has been created let's also see how we can destroy it and let's do terraform destroy as you can see terraform plans to destroy one resource so let's say yes So destroy complete. Let's confirm the same with AWS console. So we go to Amazon S3 buckets. Let's refresh the list. And as you can see, our sample bucket has been deleted. So this was the basic introduction to infrastructure as code with Terraform. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you in the next video.